Horses and welcome to PR Decoded. Today we are going to talk about press releases because it's a question I get asked a lot. How to do them, how not to do them, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I will link below to um, a cheat sheet that I created some time ago on how to create the perfect press release or how to create a press release that gets attention. I know it's difficult and I know when you're the brand owner and you're, um, you have so much information that you need to get out there, I know that sometimes prioritising it and keeping it concise and short in one press um, release can be, you know, sometimes near what impossible. Lots of you aren't natural writers, you don't necessarily feel comfortable in the space or really understand, you know, what are the governing rules of a press release? What um, What's allowed, what's not allowed? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. How to do it, how not to do it, and how you can do it. Let's jump in. Press releases, I think if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say I'd written about 500 million of them in my career. I have written corporate ones, I have written ones that are supposed to be funny, I've written ones about services, I've written ones about dog food, I've written ones about everything you could possibly imagine. I'm not a natural writer, I found it very difficult to um, get my head around press releases and to create something that was actually interesting to read. Um, and I think it took me a good, I'd say a good couple of years of actually just getting on and doing it and practicing and losing the fear of it to really master the art of it. So let me just tell you how I always, always approach a press release, right? No, the most important thing of any press release is your headline. Your headline is what has one purpose and that's to get your press release read. There is no other purpose for a headline. It has to be short, concise, snappy, to the point. It doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't have to be irrelevant, irreverent. It doesn't have to be super clever. It has to be to the point and it has to have a spark and interest, right? Spark, um, spark someone to actually either click on if you're sending it via email and read your email or to read the rest of your press release if it's on a piece of paper or whatever right so that's the focus of your subject I always come back to the subject at the end I leave it until the end and then after that I will mull over that much longer than I'll mull over everything else because I know its purpose is to get my information read people make press releases too long um, two pages unless you're spacing everything out nicely and you know you've got a 1.5 sort of like um, line spacing gap and it's nicely set out that's fine if you've got 2,000 words of text squeezed onto two pages it's never going to get read I promise you it just won't like so many people agonize over press releases like agonize and I look at them and they're like a bible of words and you know we're all busy we've all got a lot on if you think about how if you get an email from someone and you click on it and think oh that sounds interesting and then you just see all of this copy what's the first thing that goes through your mind I haven't got time to read this this just looks like if someone needs to send me all this information off the bat then you know it's probably not going to be that interesting you just need your press release to have um to get the interest of what um, of the person that you're sending it to now if you have targeted your person your journalist your influencer correctly and thoughtfully and strategically then they will already be open to what you've got to talk to them about right so make that headline as i said doesn't need to be clever or relevant it has to be to the point so make sure that you i would say focus on that last because that's the bit that really you should be spending your time on so concise try and keep it to one page if you can two pages at the absolute maximum as long as i said earlier it's not word heavy lots of images is good if you're sending it um via an email make sure those images are low res and they're embedded into your press release and not taking up huge space so many people will just send um, a journalist or an editor or an influencer a copy of a press release with a picture attached to it that's high res and will just clog up their email and the first thing that if you get a high res em email through like that it will just go straight into the bin everyone just deletes them because they can't afford to have that sort of size email sitting in their inbox so you won't even get read irrespective of how good your title is okay so no big images attached if you do want images in there which i highly suggest that you do um, we're all visual people um then make sure that they're very low res and they're embedded within the press release so um, they're as low res as possible. So word count down, images are fine, we know what the title has to do. I think get to the point in the first paragraph really, really quickly. Stop trying to sell, tell a story or paint a picture. The story comes as the supporting message, okay? If you're selling a product or um, a service, just get straight in there. What is it? Why is it good, right? And why is there nothing else that exists like it? You want all those who, what, when, why, how things, 
the first thing is like what is it right um what is it that you are selling and why is it different why is it unique why is it special why do we need it right that all has to go into the first paragraph the how you made it how you discovered the ingredient that's in it and all of those kind of things comes in the supporting message and the supporting materials you can always create a sort of a hot sheet which is basically like a one pager that is then supported by all of the rich information that the journalists might need as um, you know, as the second phase. So if they buy into what you're sending on the hot sheet and they're interested, you can just say that you can send them all the supporting um, materials or just send them a link where they can go to your website and go and find out the prices and blah, 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 and whatnot. Although some of them are quite um, time pushed, stroke lazy. So do like always make sure that you include prices, size of something and stockist where you can buy it and that all goes at the end of the press release as a kind of note to editors, right? Make sure you include your website, your social media channels and all of those kind of things. Now, what you don't need to do is um, within your press release um, is like, please don't do this because it's really embarrassing and people do it all the time and it just, it doesn't endear you to anyone. It certainly will not endear you to someone who is a writer by trade and that's to use hackneyed terms and um, screamers, so exclamation marks. If an exclamation mark is basically admitting to the world um, that you're not clever, fun or interesting um, in the sense of a press release. Hackneyed phrases at the end of the day, who doesn't want this? Honestly, avoid them like the plague because they're really cheap uses of words and they get overused, which is why they're called hackneyed, and they just make you blend into this sea of sameness, boringness, been there, done it a million times before. You know, they don't show any, they won't give any curiosity to the journalist who want to get to know your brand better. If you are going to include anything like stats, facts and figures, make sure they are all qualified with a source. So if you're saying four out of ten people um, don't wash their faces before they go to bed, don't take off their makeup before they go to bed, make sure that you've included where that statistic has come from in the source material at the notes to editors at the bottom of your press release. Because nobody, no journalist, is going to use any type of statistical information without double checking that it comes from a robust source. If it's something that's been overused, someone sent me a press release the other day where um, it was about um, underwear and it, they'd try, they were doing a really good story, like good, they were trying to come up with a hook because it wasn't a new product or a new brand that made hook bra. Mm, I'm so funny. Um, sorry, <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, and they um, were talking about how most women are wearing bras that are two sizes too small. That story has been told a million times before. I could see exactly where they were coming from, but it's not going to work. It's not going to get anyone's attention. So we talked about things like, um, you know, this company also had bras that were for women that had had mastectomies and they were really beautiful bras and it was coming up to September so we were talking about doing something very specifically about sorry October breast cancer awareness month then you've got more of a story it's more interesting it's more relevant it's more um it's newer it's fresher it's not already out there okay so really if, if you haven't got anything new to talk about and you want to try and um, generate some PR and some editorial coverage you really need that hook you really need that story it's news so you've got to find that story what was I saying before that screamers um spelling punctuation on oh please check it double check it check it again and get someone else to look over it and check it there is nothing worse than um press releases with spelling mistakes in them they reflect incredibly badly on the brand and the person that has sent them um you know especially things like you know sometimes you might if you stared at something so hard for such a long time you might not notice you've put in compliment with an e when it should be an i but a third you know someone else casting a fresh eye over that will be able to see that so make sure that you check because it really does um speak volumes about who you are so spell check grammar check you know commas in the right place full stops capital letters all of those kind of things and just keep it lean concise to the point and relevant to the person that you're sending it to and then you will be absolutely rocking don't fear them just keep doing it 
do it, do it, do it, do it as many times as you can. You know, don't don't lose faith. Um, it's practice makes perfect when it comes to press releases. And there is a very short formula. I've just talked for it. You can definitely, definitely leverage this into your own business and write the press releases of your dreams. Have a good week. Please do subscribe because it motivates me to keep this channel going and to keep creating these videos. And I'm just really keen to um, know if you're finding this um, information useful and how I can make it more useful. Have a great week and I will see you next week.